God damn! Holy sh! Like, I'm watching another video of this dude holding it in his hand, and it's massive, dude. Like, I was like, okay, yeah, it's kind of bulky. This thing is a brick. No more pussy than you win a dress. All your moms are will finesse. Got you looking like a mess. That's a hard one to digest. Hey, I'm gay. Welcome back to the Gains and Games podcast. Just kidding, it's just me. Robert was too tired to jump on, so Robert, if you're watching this, f you. Going solo today, baby. I pay for podcast hosting. I'm going to use the podcast hosting because I'm tired of wasting it. We do have an episode coming with some nice camera angles. Me and Robert did one earlier. That's going to be cool. But until then, we're just hanging out here because Steam just announced a portable gaming console for your PC games. That's sick. Do you remember when Steam was like, they were trying to do like the portable, not portable, they were doing like the console hybrid thing where they were trying to make like a game console, but it ran PC games and Steam also had their own proprietary software that worked alongside the PC and that flopped. Well, Steam was like, you know what? We see this partially untapped market. We're just going to run into it and we're going to nail it. We're just going to obliterate the competition. And that seems to be what they're doing here with their new device because these price points are pretty ridiculous. So I'm going to open up the uh, Steam Deck page. This thing is called the Steam Deck. Not to be confused with the Stream Deck. That's a totally different thing. And I'm probably popping this microphone like crazy because I don't have the pop filter set up. You know what? I don't like the way the pop filter looks. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, okay, I actually did type in Stream Deck. No wonder I can't find this shit. So, Steam Deck. Now, if you follow the community of like portable gaming PC things, you probably already know these exist, but if you don't, you may be surprised to know that there are already portable gaming console computer things out there. Most notably, the GPD Win 3. GPD is a company, a small Chinese company that's been doing these things for a while. But the Win 3, man, this is where it really looks like they knocked it out of the park. You could play GTA 5 on this thing above 60 FPS. It's really cool. So you may be wondering, if this GPD Win 3 is so cool, why isn't it taking off? And there's a reason for that. Are we still recording audio? We are. This is so professional. The reason you haven't really even probably heard of one of these things is just because it's a small company. They don't have the resources to push marketing and mass produce these things at a cheap price like, say, Nintendo or Sony would. There isn't a company for that. Well, there wasn't until Steam decided to come around. Because here's the thing about the GPD Win 3, it's almost $1,000. And there's a few other small companies that are trying to get into the mix with this, with their own products, but they're all roughly $700 to $1,200. And what you're getting is a glorified PC with the ability to play some games portably, basically. They don't come with their own software. They're quite literally just a PC that allows you to play games with this gamepad. But nonetheless, it is really cool. The tech is really getting up there with what we have available, right? But Steam said, fuck it. We're going to release our own thing. We're going to make it compatible with everything. You can use our Steam gaming software, or you can use it like a full PC, because why not, right? Here's the kicker. The price point for one of these Steam decks, $400 to get in. That's crazy, okay? What you're getting here is a AAA portable gaming device where you play all your PC games. This thing starts off at $400. Now that may sound expensive, but think about what you're getting here. Imagine a Nintendo Switch on steroids. This, <laughs> this is so cool. You know, I like portable gaming platforms, right? The Game Boy, PlayStation Vita. PlayStation Vita had a lot of future proofing. This is actually something I wanted to talk about, but uh, um, we'll be making a video later probably. This thing is really fucking awesome, and I personally actually don't use portable gaming uh, while I'm on the go all that often, but I love the tech. I love the idea of taking this technology in these high-end games and cramming them into a portable platform. Some about that is just really, really neat to me, so I honestly would have loved to have a device like the GPD Win 3, but it's just... I can't justify spending over a thousand dollars on a, a novelty item for me, right? Like it's really cool, but when I'm using a PC, I'm at home, but also my laptop is used like a desktop. And if I want to take my laptop on the go, I can do that. But when you're talking about 400 bucks, this is where it gets really interesting. And the thing about this is the reason they can pull this off is obviously because they're steam. They're huge. 
They got a lot of capital behind them. Um, they just print money from all of their, uh, you know, free to play games, their microtransactions. You know, they're in the esports scene. Steam is like, or at least it used to be the main hub for PC game purchases. Like it's like the Xbox Live of PC, right? So they got money. And we're looking at three tiers here. You can get the $400 uh, Steam Deck. That gets you uh, the Steam Deck in a carrying case. But as you go up in tiers, there's a $529 one. It looks like it gets you some NVMe faster SSD storage. More storage. You get the ca the carrying case. Blah, 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 blah. And you get a exclusive Steam Community Profile bundle, whatever the fuck that means. And there's also a $649 variant, which is 512 gigabytes of extremely fast NVMe storage. And you may be thinking to yourself, that's pretty expensive. But man, when you can get a device like this into the hands of the mainstream audience for 400 bucks, you're getting a lot here, right? So another interesting point about the price points is that the hardware to play the games is the same across the board. There's no disparity in um, you know, what you're getting as far as performance goes for what you're paying. The GPD Win 3 has a couple of different models varying in power depending on what you spend. And you're talking about for the entry device, it's like eight and $900, I think. And you're getting up to around 12 or a thousand for the performance model. So you're spending quite a lot of money when it comes to one of those things. And even then, if you're getting the entry level device, you feel like you're getting an inferior product. Where with here, it's really just storage, right? And it also comes with a micro SD slot so you can add your own storage. So you're not losing anything on performance if you decide to go with the $400 model which was really smart in my opinion. That, that's really good. Streamline all of the devices, give you three entry points, but make them all similar in performance. That's, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, yeah, one more uh, interesting note about the $649 model that seems to be separate from the other ones is this has a premium anti-glare etched glass display. Now, does this mean that the the other models are like a plastic screen, like the Nintendo Switch? I don't know. If that's the case, I guess I would personally opt for the more expensive one. Well, that and the storage. That's uh, definitely something you're going to need because that storage is going to be eaten up pretty quick by PC games. Let's be honest. Uh, 64 gigabytes for the for the base model, you're not even getting into Warzone, right? <laughs> that, that's what, 200 gigs? It's crazy. Um, so let's talk about the design of this thing, because I got some opinions on this. Um, I don't know if this is a polarizing opinion. Honestly, design-wise, I'm not really a fan. Now, before you get the pitchforks out, let me make it clear that they got a lot of functionality going on here, which makes a lot of sense. They have to. They want to make this as compatible across the board with PC games as possible. You need a lot of accessibility here, right? You got everything you need. So I got a picture of the Steam Deck pulled up here to get a better view of what's going on, and I'll show you video watchers here what it looks like if you're an audio listener. Then use your imagination or look it up yourself, I guess. But this thing seems to give you everything you need. You know, you got your two analog sticks, your D-pad, your face buttons, a menu button as well as some triggers, uh, shoulder buttons, and then you even have some extra buttons on the back. But also, one of the things that I guess is good but also kind of adds to the bulk are these two trackpads on either side of it. Obviously, this is meant to give you some mouse functionality for games that are a little more heavy on that end, which makes a lot of sense. And it seems like the analog sticks aren't these weird you know, hybrid analog sticks. They're not extremely small like the Nintendo Switches or the PS Vitas. It seems like you get full-size, fully functional analog sticks here, which is a pretty big deal, and I think that's for the best. Um, <clears throat> so in the article I'm reading here, I can't really make it out from the pictures I'm looking at, but I'm not sure if these are analog triggers or just buttons. I would really like to see analog triggers. I think even the GPD Win 3 has analog triggers. Um, that's kind of important to me. I'm not a fan of the Nintendo Switch's choice to not go with analog triggers. So it's a little disappointing if that's the case, but I 
can't really tell from what I'm looking at. As far as I.O. goes, though, I mean, you're, you're getting everything you need, right? Functional, function, function, blah, 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 functionality wise. My biggest gripe comes with the ergonomics of this thing. If you watch videos of this thing being used, man, it's big. This is a chunky boy. Like, what can I compare it to? Like, maybe the Sega Game Gear or one of those really, really old, like, Around the time the Game Boy was out, you had some of the competition using, um, you know, these freaking massive things. Um, that's kind of what I think of. That takes away from the portability. And let's not beat around the bush here. It's a, it's a fully functional computer. So obviously, they got to make some sacrifices, right? You're talking about something smaller than a laptop. I think even the GPD Win 3, which is probably the smallest, most compact one that I've seen, even uh, even that is pretty small. I mean, pretty chunky, not small. I mean, it's small for what it is, but it's still chunky. But this thing, man, this seems like you took a Nintendo Switch and you just extended it even more and put two trackpads on both of the sides. The screen is a, looks like a little over 720p LCD screen. Uh, I don't know, man. The Switch is getting an OLED, and I'm a pretty big fan of OLED panels. They look really nice, and they... Seem to provide smaller bezels. I would have liked to see a bigger screen with smaller bezels on this thing. But obviously that would probably bring up the price point, which they want to keep as low as possible. But I would have liked to see smaller bezels, maybe a little more slim down of a device. But, you know, they're making the best with what they got. It's probably best that they don't sacrifice on functionality for, you know, size and then have more problems with heat distribution and stuff down the road. So... I mean, Valve knows what they're doing. They've been experimenting with this type of thing for a, a long while, and they're no stranger to hardware, given that they were messing with the Steam Machine thing, and also they released the Valve Index, probably the nicest, highest quality VR headset out there. I'll be at $1,000. I wish that was a little cheaper, but... Oh, well, it is what it is. God damn! Holy shit! Like, I'm watching another video of this dude holding it in his hand, and it's massive, dude. Like, I was like, okay, yeah, it's kind of bulky. This thing is a brick. But uh, uh, there's, there's a little thing in the corner that says hardware not final. So maybe maybe the hardware is not final. But you know what, man? I mean, on the, on the case of price, it was really important that they hit that $400 price point. Or they would just be running into the same issue as the Win 3, right? They couldn't price this thing at like $1,000. It just wouldn't sell. It wouldn't hit the mainstream market, and with you wanting to grow a business like this, it's it's got to be able to be at a cheaper price point. As far as the functionality goes, it looks pretty comfortable to hold. I'm not going to lie. I know I've mentioned it being big and bulky, but the plus side to that is that it's probably pretty comfortable to hold, and also it gives you all the functionality that you need. You know, think about the Nintendo Switch. Think about the PlayStation Vita. Think about whatever portable platform you've ever used. There's always a compromise made for, you know, uh, form factor or functionality or portability or battery life. I wonder what the battery life is going to be like on this thing. You'd have to be getting at least a couple hours out of it, right? I mean, I would hope so. But, yeah, it's um really interesting to me, man. I think as far as price goes, I think they're nailing the price point. They're knocking it out of the park with that. Form factor, this is obviously a beefy boy, but I think it's what they have to do. I would rather it be bigger and them uh, utilize that space to the best of their abilities than try to make it slim and have heating issues or have to go with smaller analog sticks that just didn't feel as good and satisfying to use. I mean... Uh, you know, this thing seems to check all the boxes. And also, let's not forget it comes with its proprietary Steam operating system software gaming thing. So you can load all of your Steam games on. Uh, I'm guessing, theoretically, you can play all of your Steam games that would be supported with this thing. And it would work fine, right? Um, but also, you could load Windows on it and use this thing like a Windows computer, which is what I would do. Um, this might be a day one buy for me. I, I'm being honest with you, man. I would love to see how you could use this as like an all-in-one package. Could you daily drive this thing as a PC, do some light editing on it, 
or at least editing to the standard that I do in my videos. Um, it seems pretty cool. I mean, they're showing off desktop gameplay. It's legitimately being used like a computer. It's being used like a handheld. The cat is stepping on the table. I think on the hardware side of things, they're using an AMD-based chip. This has got like 16 gigs of RAM. It's pretty damn beefy for what it is. I think AMD's working closely with Steam or with Valve to create their own proprietary chip. That's uh, really interesting for me, and that's a big plus. Can I just say that I think it's really cool that Valve is taking this direction? Like, they got all this money, right? They've been sitting on all this money for so long. They haven't been making games, honestly. They've been focusing on, like, their storefront and their software side of things. And I think this is a clear indicator as to why they've been doing that. I feel like all of their, uh, all of their growth has kind of came to this point. I think this is the focus that they're... Uh, they're putting on their uh, product lines and stuff. I think it's really cool. Um, I think this is a really, really awesome system. We've seen with the Switch, there's a demand for this stuff, but as we've seen with the, the as we've seen with the Switch, there was a lot of compromises made to hit that price point, hit that portability factor, and also offer some level of decent performance. But I mean, let's look at Doom 2016 on the Switch. It looks ancient and compared to what's going on in this thing i mean you're talking about full-size triple a games you're talking about pc games dude when i was a kid i wanted to like play left for dead on my psp we would do these quake mod things right i actually have a video covering those quake mods so uh yeah if you're interested check that out on the sometimes i drink tea channel if you're an audio listener we would just um, we would mod Quake and try to make it play and look like Left 4 Dead. Or you could also stream your PC to your PSP, which didn't work well at all. I don't know if it was the limitations of the hardware or just my internet, but that fucking sucked. But dude, I always wanted to play like Left 4 Dead 2 portably. I thought that was awesome, and it was a big uh, it was a big deal on gaming laptops at the time. I remember Alienware was showing off Left 4 Dead 2 gameplay, which Nowadays, it's that seems crazy. Like, you can run Left 4 Dead 2 on everything, right? But back then, it was like a really big deal. And now it's like, shit, man. I can just play everything Steam on this little device. That's really cool. Um, and I mean, it looks really impressive. I don't know what else to say. Uh, you know, who's this for? I mean, if you had any interest in the Nintendo Switch, and you're not just a person who likes first-party Nintendo titles. You want everything. You want to run the gambit. Like, somebody like me, right? Um, I think this is a big deal. And you're talking about... Let's, let's take a look at the Switch OLED, right? 350 bucks, which I thought was a decent price point. You know, you're getting a nice OLED screen. It's a little bit of an upgrade from the standard Switch. And it's only an extra 50 bucks. And you get the dock, too. But... 400 bucks gets you an entire portable handheld computer where you can play Steam games. You can play everything. Let's not forget emulation, right? You could, in theory, just emulate the Switch on this thing. You're talking about, now you're playing first-party Nintendo titles. Is this video going to get taken down? Yeah, you, I mean, you can emulate Nintendo titles. You can emulate the PlayStation 2, Dreamcast. I mean, the sky's the limit, right? So you're playing all of this. And you're also getting AAA first-party games. You're getting, I don't know, Death Stranding. I'm looking at some control gameplay on this thing, which, by the way, isn't even possible on the Switch. They had to do, like, a cloud streaming version of it for that. I mean, Doom Eternal? I mean, the sky seems to really be the limit. I don't know how powerful this thing is for sure. Obviously, we're going to have to wait till more stuff comes out. But I mean, if you taper your expectations, I mean, you're playing Death Stranding on this thing. You're playing Call of Duty on this thing. This is, a, I mean, this is crazy. This is like mind blowing to me because like I keep thinking about like my 12 year old self. If you told me 10 years ago, we would be able to play fully fledged AAA titles on the go, even in a device this kind of chonky. I would say you're fucking crazy. Like there's no way. How would they fit that? How would they fit that power in this thing? 
But yet, I'm, I mean, here, this is literally happening. This is coming out this year. I think it's holiday 2021. Like, dude, day one by. Give me the release date. Come on. Um, man, I'm really excited. This is like, this is the coolest thing of 2021 for me by far. This is absolutely the coolest thing. Um, man, my mind's really blown. I'm still, still taking it in, you know? Let's think about this thing realistically, though. Um, what's the battery life going to be like? Obviously, that's going to be a challenging thing. But if you consider how big this thing is, you know, it could have a pretty beefy battery. Also, thermals are to be taken into consideration. Like in my laptop here, I love the Zephyrus G15. The fans get extremely loud during heavy load, at least in turbo mode or even in performance mode. So is this thing going to be loud as shit to use? Um, I don't know. I'm not watching the press release videos, right? With audio, I'm just kind of looking at what the device is. I'm kind of kind of staying a little clueless for this first impressions video podcast thing. But um, um, controls, the D-pad is like in the top left corner. That's a little weird. The analog sticks are also like Wii U gamepad style. They're both up top. They're not like uh, one up here and one down here like every other modern controller. Well, no, take that back. Um, DualShock 4, that's, um, those two are still together, right? So yeah, I guess that's not a good comparison. But yeah, I mean, that's ergonomics are definitely something to uh, be concerned with. This thing looks really similar to the Win 3 in a lot of ways with how it um, has the little two grips on the back that curve. Um, I don't know, man. This thing is really, really cool. Uh, I mean, obviously it's big, right? That's another thing. Like, do you want to carry around something this big? I mean, when you think of portable gaming, when you think of the DS or the even the Vita, I mean, up until the Switch, this was always a consideration, just something you can throw in your pocket. Then we got to the Nintendo Switch and we were like, okay, that's enough slices. Like it's getting bigger, but you can take the Joy-Cons off and you can still slide it in your pocket without the Joy-Cons. And then they were like, okay, we'll make the Switch light. That's a little smaller, but now you can't dock it to the TV. You can't have your cake and eat it too. And we were like, okay, I guess we got to deal with the Switch and put it in a case. And then now we have portable PCs who are just like, Fuck it, here's a brick. It's really powerful. You can do everything on it, but now you can't stick it in your pocket. You can barely fit it into a pocket in your bag. But that's still a lot of power. That's still a lot of a little, a little, a lot of cramped little power in there. That's really, really, really cool. Um, I don't know, man. The $400 price point is really mind-blowing to me. What's the build quality of this thing like? We got to see, you know... This is a brand new product. There's going to be a lot of concerns with quality control. And I don't know. I think Valve has a pretty good track record, right? Like, I haven't heard anything bad about the Valve Index. Um, my friend has the Valve Index. My brother has the Valve Index. And both of them love it. It's, it's a really nice headset. Really quality shit. So I'm pretty confident that they can pull this off. I mean, if anybody is going to do it, it's going to be Valve. I mean, GPD has done a great job with what they what they got, but this is going to cannibalize that, right? That's another thing that I haven't even discussed is the competition. This is going to blow the competition out of the water. That being said, the GPD Win 3 looks a fair bit smaller in comparison. Like, you're going to have a more comfortable time carrying one of those things, but, I mean, this is a Valve product. They have their own software for it. It's $400. This is going to be a lot more refined. You know, the price point on something like the Win 3 isn't necessarily just because of the build quality, but because it's really expensive to manufacture something like that, especially when you're a smaller company that has to have Kickstarters that have this thing going. Valve's just like, eh, yeah, we can throw a billion dollars into this, and if we lose it at the end of the day, who cares? We'll just go back to, we'll, we'll do another VR game or something. You know, it's crazy, man. I don't know what else to add here. I'm I'm really dumbfounded. I'm really excited to see what Valve brings to the table with this thing. And if it's successful, I mean, unfortunately, I think it's going to kill the competition. I mean, price concerns, 
price is almost like usually the main concern, right? Like nobody's going to spend a thousand dollars on a maybe, right? Like let's talk about VR headsets. The Oculus Quest is 300 bucks. People will put 300 bucks on a product like that and give it a try. No average consumer is going out of their way to buy a high-end PC and just throw a thousand dollars at a VR headset. But Valve seems to be taking the opposite approach. The, I guess, the non-enthusiast approach, and they're just like, "Hey, man, here's this really cool device for 400 bucks. You want to get into PC gaming? You want to just take your PC games on the go? Well, here you go. This is this is the thing we're making. With all our money, we're gonna take our money and." Make a little mach- little machine. And, um, I mean, they're the guys to do it, unfortunately, to the competition. I think GPD is probably sweating right now. They're like, fuck. But they, they already got their funding. I mean, that's all crowdfunded. They were guaranteed the money before they even dropped the item. I really am interested in the future, though. Is Valve going to continue with hardware? Probably. I mean, they did the index, radio silence, and then they released this thing, and it's really awesome i would love to see more AAA games from valve uh i know a lot of other people would we were waiting on left for dead 3 that ain't happening yeah there's back for blood but not exactly a left for dead 3 is it yeah i don't know i think this is going to be a shorter podcast guys which y- y'all are probably fine with if anybody's still listening to this thing i don't know i'm literally just sitting here rambling at this point i'm really excited for this though are you really excited for this i'm Honestly, curious as to whether this could be a PC replacement for some people. Obviously, it's not going to be the most powerful. I mean, we're talking about probably like a system on a chip, discrete graphics type of situation. This isn't going to run the highest end games at the highest frame rate. This, I don't even think this thing is running an NVIDIA GPU, so you're not going to have things like shadow play. I'm curious as to how they're going to tackle those things. I'm curious as to how this would work as a dedicated PC. Is this thing going to be compatible with other programs? Is it going to have a hard time understanding the hardware? Is this just going to be like an AMD laptop with no GPU? I don't know. These are all things I guess we'll find out as time goes on, but I'm extremely excited to see how this thing goes, and maybe you guys are too. Let's have a discussion in the comments. If you're listening to this on a podcast format and you've never heard of me before, you can go check out my YouTube channel, Sometimes I Drink Tea. That's all one word. We do gaming retrospectives and do little podcasts like this. Uh, Like I said, the homie Robert will be back on the next one. And I'm really excited to see the future of this device. Yeah, (laughs) I don't know. I just keep dragging this thing on. But yeah, check out some of my other content. We just dropped a 30-minute, I say we, me, Me and Robert, Robert helped me with some skits and that was a big help, but I dropped a 30 minute Twisted Metal retrospective on the reboot of Twisted Metal that came to the PS3. I'm really proud of that video, really entertaining stuff. We have some, we have a neat skit in it in the intro. I think it's worth watching, but uh, yeah, all that being said, I got some really cool stuff planned for the future. I got some videos in the works, including if you're watching the video, this is a sneak peek, a little world exclusive for all of you video watchers that made it to this point. If you can even if you can even somewhat guess what's going on here with this thing. We got Shrek shit taped all over. There's a Shrek thing right there, right there, right there. I got Donkey and Shrek taped to the kitchen counter. Look, man, just stick around for it. It's going to be sick, all right? But uh, yeah, all that being said, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening, and uh, I'll catch you later. Give me your thoughts on this thing below, and uh, yeah, that's all I got. Peace. You got anything you want to add, bud? Nah, he's sleeping. I don't know if you can see this, but he's snoozing right now. All right.